Everywhere you go in the world, there is crime being committed. It's the same here in Russia. Usually, there are street robberies. Sometimes, very rarely, homicides. Which is when the city government calls me in. A lot of the story I will tell you will certainly bring skepticism and doubt. But please believe me, I have little time left. I started off in the police force when I was 19. I rose up the ranks. In my 20s, I was confronted by one of my higher ops and was asked if I wanted to investigate some of the crime here. Since apparently, many missing persons were found done in alleyways and under bridges with one thing in common. A symbol carved onto the neck. The HR wanted me to investigate the attacks, in which I reluctantly accepted. I will forever regret there for the rest of my life. It was a couple of days before I was brought into the case, but I was eventually in a room full of fellow investigators with an empty board. Okay, okay, everybody... Silent. Those of you who have been brought near by the Yakust Police Department are going to be investigating several deaths that occurred. The lead investigator explained to us. As me and the rest of the team approached him, he pulled out a picture of one of the victims. As you can see, he said as he pointed at the neck on the photo. There appears to be a stick figure carved onto there. He then proceeded to pull out more photos from a box. See? Same thing. There is a connection here, as well as a very dangerous individual. We were all silent. We knew what we were going to be shown, but still, a lot of us were not prepared. He continued. We'll be heading to the most recent discovery of a victim. Get yourself ready. We're going. We all moved at a fast pace to gather our things and run outside to a car. We got in. And the lead investigator drove us there. I expected it to take a few weeks to crack the case. But it turns out that it would take days of my and many other men's lives, and it would take many lives. We arrived at the location and got out of the vehicle. Several policemen were guarding a checkpoint to stop anyone from wandering in. He led us to a body bag. Unzip it, officer, the lead said. Are you sure, sir? Yes, he responded. The officer unzipped it and walked to the checkpoint. Jesus, I exclaimed. What? The lead responded. One of the investigators approached the body. I think I see something under the shoulder. The investigator grabbed the decaying corpse and turned it around. There's a piece of paper, sir. He said as he turned to the lead. Let me see it. The lead said as he took it from him. Coordinates. It's north of here. Four miles. Rookie, come here with your phone. He said as he pointed at me. I did as he said. Put these coordinates in. I followed his instructions. It's an abandoned apartment, sir, I said. Well then, that's where we're headed, he said as he zipped up the bag. We all rushed back to our car, and he drove us there. It was only about a three-minute drive. We all had some small talk on the way regarding the case. We're here, everyone out. Fast, fast, the lead said. We all ran out, 
Makarov's lowered at a fast pace. Go, 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 Dave, he was screaming. The lead kicked down the entrance and ran in. Clear. We all followed him quickly. We did the same to every room of the building until we had reached the basement door. Get ready. There could be some spooky stuff in here. He said as he walked down the stairs leading to the door. He lowered his pistol and we did the same. Open the door for me, he said to me as I was at the front of the line. I approached, and I felt as if something was seriously wrong. But I opened the door and the lead walked in, me trailing right behind him. There was a lamp pointing toward the wall. It was off. We approached it in the pitch black and scrambled to see if there was any on switch. Eventually, it turned on. I turned to the wall, and my skin went pale. The lead turned right after me, and gasped. There was a tall, pale entity facing toward the wall. Hello? I asked. The lead told everyone to walk in. We all walked over to it. Hello, do you need help? I repeated. It turned around and stared at us. It oddly reminded me of the stick man on all the victims. It screeched and ran at the lead. He discharged around at its chest, but it kept going. Ed tackled him down and started ripping at his flesh. Holy crap, someone screamed. We all ran for the stairs. Most of us reached the door out of the basement. I saw many people try to run to the door, but it was too late. It was too close to them. They wouldn't make it in time. I just stood there until a fellow investigator shut the door close and locked it. I could hear screams and bangs at the door. Poor guys. I could hear them being ripped to shreds. I could hear gunshots in there too. Come on, that'll only hold him off for so long. Someone screamed. I finally got to my bearings and ran with everyone else. When we got to the car and hightailed it back to the station. We went in as ten men. Came out as six. The highest ranking officer in the station approached us as we came in. What the heck happened? Where is your lead? He's dead, sir. I responded. What happened? He said, right before taking us to the investigation room. We gave our pistols to the HR, as he was collecting them and putting them away. You, he pointed at an investigator. Explain what in the world happened out there. Well, we encountered a... the attacker, and we left and he could barely finish. We left them for dead. It got them all, he finished. You didn't even try firing at it, the HR asked. We did. It didn't do anything to it, I said. You seem like the right guy for leading this. At least you ain't stuttering like the rest, he said as he turned to me. 1am tonight. Park outside the apartment. You will be listening in on the communications of our local raid team, he said. You mean they're going in? I asked. Yes. What else would you be listening to? He responded. They're not going to make it. It's you... He cut me off with. It's an order. At 1am in the morning, I was parked outside the apartment, listening in on the radio with a headset. We're going in. Do you read? 
they asked. Reed, you can go in. I said in a hopeless voice. I knew that uh, I was going to listen in on their final moments. I heard them walk into the building. I heard them reach the stairs. And I heard them kick down the door. Status? I asked. Positive. Zero problem. They responded. Hello? I exclaimed in fear. Stop right there. Please. This is the police. I heard. And after that, I heard shotgun blasts and running. Status update. You boys all right. My radio was cut off. The plan was, I'd take the raid team out of there with my car if crap hit the fan. If you don't understand... I had to go in there. I took off my headset and got out of my car. I had a pistol just in case I needed it. As I walked into the apartment, I could smell something vile. I knew these men were already gone. The door to the basement was wide open. I walked in, aiming. I thought maybe if I didn't disturb it, it wouldn't notice me. I heard a whisper in the shadows. The room was pitch black. I just kept walking, until someone grabbed my arm and pulled me back. It was one of the policemen. Shh, stay quiet, he said. Are you the only one left? I whispered. Yeah. He was snatched by something and pulled away. No, no, he was screaming. I ran around, trying to find the lab. I felt around and I grabbed it. I turned it on and I aimed at the creature's face, as it tore off the officer's wrist. The creature was blinded and it dropped him, but it was too late for the officer. I dropped the lamp at the stairs and smashed the door behind me. I kept the lamp on, so if it broke through the door, maybe it would be blinded again and retreat back. I drove home and got to my bed, and I got some much needed rest. It would be better to report what happened later. I woke up, had some breakfast, and drove to the station as soon as I could. The HR was waiting for me as I walked in. What happened last night? He asked. They're all gone. Like I told you, we need to stop the- I know, he said. I got permission from the city government to use C4, he told me. Finally. It's only been a couple days, I was saying. Right, he cut me off. I'm sending more officers to go in there with you. Without hesitation, I got into my car and drove behind several police cars. We arrived at the apartment. I got out of the car and watched as an armored policeman carried a box of explosives into the building. Several other policemen had their guns aiming on the entrance. I noticed that a truck carrying concrete was moving toward the entrance. The policemen were radioed something, and they holstered their pistols. I got out of my truck and asked the HR what that truck was doing here. It's closing off the entrance, he said. I turned off my radio. Just a second after, it dropped all the concrete down onto the entrance, and then suddenly the explosives went off. I quickly realized the policeman was still inside there. Wait! I was screaming, but the HR walked up to me. It's okay. I walked over to some of the other policemen. I realized they were the other investigators that I was working with. Hey, I said. Is it... is it finally done? One of the investigators asked. Yes, I responded. I heard a shout and then a scream, as I turned to where the door used to be. 
there was a pale arm sticking through, and then a foot pushed out of the rubble. After this is posted well, there's nothing I can do this time. They're trying to toss more concrete onto it. That won't work. May only God help the poor civilians in the houses nearby. I realize my fate and I close my eyes.